Now, new tax legislation that will impact retirement funds as of the 1st of March this year has created controversy in the country. A furious debate is raging as some workers and some of them, some workers have even considered resigning to cash out their savings before then. However, this, if this legislation is unpacked, it could, would seem that it is not necessarily bad news and the reform could benefit South Africans and leave them much better off in the long run. Here with me in studio to discuss this further is PWC tax leader Kyle Mandy and Hetty Joubert, who is the Head of Retirement Fund Governance at MMI Investment and Savings Retirement Solutions. Thank you so much for joining us today, lady and gent. Uh, perhaps let's pick off by getting your quick fire views with regard to these new retirement reforms that have been signed in. Positive or negative for the consumer? Kyle, let's start with you. Well, unquestionably, on balance, it's, it's, it's positive. Um, a lot of misconceptions and misinformation are doing mm -hmm. the rounds in the market, and uh, but there's no question. Uh, overall, very positive. Thumbs up from you, Hetty. Your view? Definite thumbs up. I think if members understood exactly what the implications were, they would not be as agitated as they seem to be right now. Mm. From my basic understanding of this, fundamentally they need to get an annuity, which means that they'll be guaranteeing themselves a monthly income once they retire, versus getting a lump sum refurbishing their homes, purchasing cars and consuming it in what other ever means, and then being stuck and resorting to uh, either their children or the state again to look for uh, additional funding. Is this correct and isn't this the understanding that uh, is out there on the ground? It's exactly that, but, but not, well, not exactly that. It is like, it's, that is the intention, but not all members will have to buy an annuity. For mm. instance, if, you, if your benefit is less than 247500 then you don't have to, you can still take everything in a lump sum. And for most Provident Fund members, they, if you look at what they earn and how much they contribute, they will not get to that ever in their lifetime. So uh, although the intention for government, uh, government is to annuitize so that members have an income after retirement, some members are not even going to get there. Mm. So what are fundamentally the arguments uh, about you? Because I've heard arguments that uh, uh, the annuities that they'll be able to get will be around 2,000 Rand, which is almost in line with the government grant. So why buy an annuity when I could just rely on the state? Is this a misconception that people have out there? Well, it's exactly that. It's about reducing reliance on the state. It's, it's about prevent, being able to prevent those who are in the position to, to retire on a, on a re moderate mm -hmm. um, pension, if you like. From, from blowing it up front and then having to turn to the state at a later stage for assistance. So that's really what it's about. And we've seen so many sob stories of not necessarily low income earners, we're talking about middle income earners, the middle class in this country, taking their pension savings and losing the lot and being left destitute. And that's exactly what this is meant to be preventing. Mm. Uh, perhaps if we can touch back onto the state and the reason why they've put these amendments in place. I take it the fundamentals are that government doesn't have enough revenue in order to be supporting the social structure here. If you can... Yeah, I mean, well, uh, that's absolutely right. And we know there's, a, there's already a, a very high dependence on the state and so far as social security assistance is concerned. You look at the old age pension grants and some that are out there. Um, that already is placing a, a very significant burden on the state and that can't not be maintained, it's not sustainable. Um, so the last thing you need is those who can really afford to actually retire and, and fund their own retirement, actually losing the, those benefits mm. and, and, and having to fall back on, on the state for assistance in that regard. Mm. So this is really what it's fundamentally about. Exactly. It's actually so ironic that a lot of members think that they can handle their lump sums better than insurance company, for instance. Sure. Um, and one must realize that most employees are used to getting a monthly salary. So if they see their pension and it's in the millions, they think, oh my, I'm very, very rich. But they have to realize that that money has to tie them over until they die. So from retirement until death. Mm. And if you're if you in good health and you retire at the age of 65, you can live until 90. Then a million is not going to take you very far. And, and as, as um, was pointed out, unfortunately, most members, if you give them a lump sum, they don't use it wisely. They don't put it somewhere where they can get a monthly income. They go for the splashing out, so they buy all the luxuries that they've always wanted, mm. and then they destitute. Mm. Uh, walk us through this further as well with regard to the changes. Uh, pension funds, I understand there won't be too much of a significant change there, but provident funds, uh, what's, what's the, 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 the dynamics there that might uh, uh, be altered. On pension funds, the only thing that's changing is that members now will be taxed on the employer contributions, but at the very same time they get a deduction. So it's tax Similar neutral. Similar to an RA? Um, or not entirely? No, not, not entirely, but because all retirement contributions, it doesn't matter to which fund you make it, they will all be taxed, but you get the deduction at the same time. So for the pension fund member, 
they get a deduction on, uh, sorry, they get tax on the employee contribution, but they get the deduction in the same month, so it's tax neutral. Mm. So nothing really changes for them. On the provident fund, if the member paid member contributions towards the provident fund, he'll actually be better off if he was taxed on that. Because currently, you pay tax on your own contribution, you don't get a deduction for that. Uh, you don't pay tax on the employer contribution. So from the 1st of March, you will be taxed on the employer contribution, simultaneously deduction, but you'll also get a deduction on your own contribution, which to date you didn't get. So you will actually be better off. Your take home pay will be higher. Win-win situation for exactly. all. Exactly. It, it is, absolutely. I mean, the, 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 o the only ob potentially objectionable element to this is the 350,000 Rand monetary cap. And Explain so that to us a little bit further so that we understand uh, within which dynamics we're working with here. Okay. Well, certainly, look, uh, as Hetty was pointing out, you, you, as a general proposition, you'll be entitled to deduct up to 27.5% of your, of your remuneration mm -hmm. through contributions to retirement funds, any retirement fund in combination. Um, However, there is a monetary cap that's been put on them, and that's currently they're sitting at 350,000 Rand annual cap. So you may not deduct more than 350,000 Rand for contributions to, a retirement, f to retirement funds, mm -hmm. um, even if that is below the 27.5% limit that's placed there as well. So, so that's the, the only area where there's potential, as I say, potential room for some controversy. If that's the concern, it sounds to me like it will be hitting the middle to higher income earners more than instead of the working class that are uh, opposing this new law. Well, not even middle income earners. This will be hitting mm. those who are earning uh, in excess of, of a million rand a year. Who, they're the only ones who can even potentially be hit by, by that. But there's, a, there's an issue there in that because you rely heavily on those sort of earners, in essence, to subsidise mm. your lower income earners and make, make your funds um, viable, if you like, from an economic point of view, mm -hmm. to bring the costs down f uh, of all users, of all members of those funds and so on. So um, if those contributions cease to come in, that potentially creates a problem, pushes up the costs of those, of those retirement funds for others as well. Mm -hmm. We've also been hearing memories and, uh, and reports that uh, individuals might look to cash out their pension funds uh, just before the 1st of March kicks in. Uh, risky decision that they're looking to take. What's your advice to individuals uh, that might be watching? Don't even think about it. Because if you do that, not only are you stuffing up your retirement, but you're also taking away your potential to earn an income. Because remember, if you resign, you resign. You leave your yeah. job. So now I, I have my pension money that I was supposed to use one day when I get to retirement. I spend it now, and I don't have an income. What if they say, but it's my money, Hetty. I'm a nurse, I'm a teacher, I can get a job anywhere, I'm a TV presenter, maybe someone will want to hire me anywhere else. Uh, that's the typical conversation that we hear out there. Uh, but critically, like you say, if I could live up to 90, compound interest will certainly work in my benefit in, in, in the long term, right? Well, I think it's all fair and well, you know, taking the money, and re well, resigning and taking the money and so on. But whatever you take out, if you wanted to have the same sort of lifestyle as you were going to have in retirement, you've got to replace that mm. at some point. And you've got to replace it, not only the capital you've taken out, you've got to replace the growth that would have accrued on that to get back to where you were. So uh, it, it's, it's a very bad idea, regardless of, 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 of the arguments that may be put in favour of that. Exactly. To come back to the age limits, I understand 55 individuals who are over that age, uh, it will not impact on their retirement savings uh, uh, this year, is that correct? It actually does. As the law stands right now, if you are over 55 and you stay in the same provident fund, then it won't impact you. So when ah, you get to retirement, okay. you can stay, still take everything in a lump sum. But as I said, as the law stands right now, if that member transfers out to any other fund to which he starts contributing, then from the day that he starts contributing in that new fund, he will build up the portion that will be subject to the annuitization. But it's only that portion. So everything that he had up to then, he can still take in a lump sum. And for individuals who are slightly younger, is this uh, the opportune time then for them to interact with financial professionals uh, and advisors to actually understand how they need to perhaps rejig their retirement savings portfolio? Most definitely. They, they certainly should be looking at that. And, and particularly those who are currently contributing above the monetary cap of 350000 mm. Depending on their circumstances, might not be the best thing for them to, be to, to, contrib to continue cr contributing above that level. So they should certainly be looking at their circumstances and taking the appropriate financial advice. Mm -hmm. yeah, just on that, if you are, let's say, two years from retirement, the fact that you can't get the deduction in that specific tax year is not the end of the world because whatever you can't get as a deduction while you're contributing, you can get as a deduction when you leave the fund. So when you get to retirement, whatever was in excess of that monetary cap, you can deduct then and only after you've deducted it, the tax table will apply. So you'll still get the first 500,000 of the balance also tax free uh -huh. and then the tax will kick in. So if you are very close to retirement, you might not have to restructure.
Exactly. Okay. Well, we'll leave it on that note. And just to close off with very quickly, something that happened yesterday, the increase in interest rates by 50 basis points. Uh, I take it this again comes in to emphasize the fact that consumers need to save because uh, that's how they'll reap the benefits instead of being in debt. Exactly. Right. Most definitely. <laughs> well, we'll leave it on that note. Thank you so much for your time today and for uh, demystifying the concerns with regard to the retirement reforms that were recently signed into law here in South Africa. But that was PwC tax leader Carl Mandy and uh, Hetty Joubert, who's the head of Retirement Fund Governance at MMI Investment and Savings Retirement Solutions.